You know, I, I don't know what you mean by a symbol. A uh, symbol is anything that represents either something what? else or a whole collection of well, things. What's the symbol that you've used? I mean, just, a, just any symbol. I, I, I can't oh. get one. I'm not, okay. I'm not working with any fill-in-the-blank. Okay, just as an example, my symbol for maintaining my focus while doing a presentation is uh, a graphic that I've seen on TV, like with a spotting scope. It's a, it's a circle with a cross, crosshairs in there. And that's basically my symbol for staying on target, staying in focus with doing a presentation. Um, okay. One of my symbols for financial abundance is a handful of $100 bills. And that was, that was a symbol that I used pretty effectively on a previous promotion just, what was it, a month ago. Well, I'm thinking I must already be using symbols in, in certain instances, and I just... I'm just not being able to pinpoint what they are. They're not coming through yet. So, our our culture is pretty much based on symbols in a lot of different ways. I mean, um, as as just an example, uh, businessmen who wear a suit and tie, that clothing is a symbol that they are in business, that they are professional, and so that sets them aside from the general public. Doctors have the white lab coat, which is a symbol that represents their status. Well, I'm realizing right now that in the pro program mm -hmm. folder for the Sunday gathering that, that I put together every week, I've set it up so that the front says Unity of Muskegon with a big space in the front for a rectangular picture of some sort. Mm -hmm. And whatever image I choose to put in there serves as a symbol for a portal to our experience. So now I get it. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Diane, when he does the meditation, you'll you'll be surprised. Okay. It will, will come to you. Okay. We're yeah, we're going to be right. working with all sorts He's of different symbols some. and yeah. Okay. Yeah, but knowing knowing that on a conscious level is also good too. Yeah. Uh, just because you experience it as we go through, it's also good to be able to recognize it, right. and that's kind of what what we get into. Right. Colors are also very symbolic. Um, for a lot of people, the color red can have a multitude of different meanings. It can mean energy for one. It can mean danger is another. It can mean love as, as another way of interpreting that color. The color blue can be a very powerful color. For a lot of people, blue, at least certain shades of it, can be very relaxing. It can be a symbol of relaxation. Blue can also be a symbol of healing or at least disinfecting um, a, mm -hmm. a disinfectant color in a way um, I think you were motioning a symbol of communication throat chakra yeah so different colors can have different meanings and can be symbols uh, just as a color um, yeah purple <coughs> purple uh, for a lot of people is a spiritual color it is it has a I was just questioning, and I probably could ask myself that question, but it just occurred to me that my road was going north, and the meadow was on my left, and it turned to go into the forest to the right. Now, that could have a meaning. So a meadow on one yet. side, forest on the other. Yeah, the road is running alongside the forest, uh, and, and the meadow on one side and the forest, and all of a sudden it turned and went into the forest. Okay. But then, then they have the left and the right. So yeah. even know. even left and right can can be symbols for yeah. different things depending on what context you're in. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's all different kinds of symbols that can be used. Um, we'll play with a number of them as as we go through. Um, Getting back into the process that we're working with, relaxation is the, is the first step, and it's important to be able to relax as deeply as you can. Uh, the first exercise that I had planned for today is just simply helping you get into that very deep level of relaxation. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. Um, although, okay. Just, just so that I get it on, on the recording, just get some the basic information. 
Some people feel like they have trouble relaxing, and there's a few things that we can do ahead of time to make it easier to relax. Uh, one thing that I, that I find for myself is that if I have been sitting too much, and I do a lot of my work at a desk, so that happens quite often. If I do too much sitting, I have trouble relaxing until I get up and get some physical exercise. Going for a walk is a good way of getting that exercise, doing just normal, normal exercises. It doesn't have to be that, but it can be anything that gets your blood pumping, anything that gets you breathing deeper, anything that causes you to use up that energy can help you relax because your body needs that physical activity. And sometimes if it's not getting enough of it, it will prevent you from relaxing because it says, no, 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 we don't need any more of that. We need to go the other way. So getting that physical activity is one way to, to help you be able to relax deeper. Um, another thing that... Can you excuse me while I use restroom? Sure, sure, sure. Um, that's, that's also another important <laughs> factor for relaxing is making sure your body needs are taken care of. Uh, if you have to go to the bathroom, go. <laughs> because otherwise your body's going to say, uh, I need to hold on to this. I can't, I can't let you relax too much quite yet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, taking, taking care of things is, is definitely a good thing. Balanced diet, I, I think everyone here already knows that, that if we eat too much sugar, and I know that some of the treats in there had sugar in there, if you have too much sugar, that can keep you from la relaxing. That's all we brought was sugar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there was a reason for that. And then um, the other big one is just being able to clear your mind. Uh, if you've got too many things you're trying to keep track of, that can help. That or, well, should, shouldn't use the word help there. It can prevent you from relaxing if you've got too much that you're trying to keep track of. That's where writing things down is a good thing to do because once you've written it down, you don't have to worry about, well, what if I forget this? What if I forget that? Once it's written down, you know you're not going to forget it and you can always go back to it later. Um, so... Some of the different ways of preparing to relax. Um, the actual mechanics of relaxing, basically anybody who's slept for a night or taken a nap knows how to relax. You basically go through the same process. But for those of us who can live too much on our conscious level, sometimes it's good to um, have that focus, slowing down, focusing on the moment, being mindful, the things that Unity and, and our other organizations teach are all good for that you were saying unity and coptics, unity and coptics yep uh, releasing your concerns that's going back to clearing the mind being able to put things aside for the moment saying okay for the next 10 minutes i'm going to be doing this and i'm not going to worry about the neighbor who's running their lawnmower too loud i'm not going to worry about the, <coughs> the the people driving down the road with music cranked up to max. I'm going to just put that aside for the moment, and for the next 10 minutes, I am going to be right here, right now, doing what I'm doing, and just let it all go. So, part of the process there, and why am I putting this down if I'm just going to keep going back to it again? <laughs> okay, um, so, yeah, we're, ba we're basically there. So yeah, the process of relaxing, just kind of set everything aside, give yourself the space, um, and focusing on enjoyable things helps you to relax. And that is one of the reasons why we brought in the goodies and the sugar stuff. Because if you, <coughs> some, sometimes we need those little indulgences to give ourselves a reason to feel good. And especially if we've been going through a week where everything seems to have been going wrong, we need something that goes right. And sometimes just a small little treat is enough to put yourself into that space that says, yes, this is good. And I can focus on the good feelings of this moment right now and let that carry me into a deep level of relaxation. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to slow down here. Because that's part of the process, slowing down, focusing on the moment, and taking a nice deep breath to release those tensions and to let the body 
drift down into a nice relaxation. Take another deep breath. No need to hold it. No need to time it out to any particular thing. No need to rush. Just focus on your breathing for a little while. Because when we're just starting into this relaxation process, we tend to need to focus on something. And so if we focus on something simple, like our breathing, that's a good thing. And as we focus on our breathing, and as we let ourselves relax, take a moment to imagine something that feels very good. Some small indulgence. And it can be one of the little treats we just had, or it can be something else entirely. Anything that you truly enjoy, whatever it is, imagine that you are experiencing it now. And let yourself fully embrace the experience. And as you do, your body will relax even further. And at some point, I want you to not only notice the experience of the indulgence, but to notice your feeling behind it. Notice how good it feels and notice the feeling of how good it feels. And if this feeling were a color, what color would it be? And as your mind gives you a color to represent this feeling of pleasure, you have just seen your first symbol in this process. Because this color, as you focus on this color, will help you feel good and help you to continue to feel good. Anytime you imagine this color, anytime you see this color, and you can mentally send this color of pleasure to every part of your body to further relax it and to take you down further into your subconscious mind, into your deeper mind, closer to the divine mind within. And the relaxation can be, rep can be represented by many different symbols. We've talked about a color that represents the feeling of pleasure. And the feeling of relaxation may be the same color or it may be a different color. Or there may be a sound associated with it. And whatever sound you hear within your mind can be another symbol to help you relax. A calm, relaxing symbol that takes you further down into your deeper self. And now we will count backwards from 10 to 1. And as we do, imagine yourself going down deeper into yourself. You can imagine yourself going down a staircase or riding down an elevator or some other way of conveying yourself down into your deeper self, whatever feels most appropriate to you. And as we go down, we start at 10 and we go down to 9. And then we drift down further to eight and down to seven. And as we go deeper, you are more in contact with your deeper self. And we go down to six and then to five, continuing to four, getting closer and closer to the divine mind within. And we go down to three further to two, and down to one. And now we are down at the bottom of this short flight of stairs or this elevator, whatever it was that you were traveling down into, into your deeper self. And at this point, you are free to go from one place to another in the blink of an eye, or what would be the blink of an eye. 
And so now you can imagine yourself in your ideal place of relaxation, a thoroughly enjoyable place to be, some place that just makes you feel good for being there. And you can let your spirit reach out and expand and fill this entire space. And as you do, the divine self within you also expands to become more, to become more of your experience, to fill you as a human being, to become more unified with who you are as a person and down into this space and making contact with the deeper mind. It is a very healing experience. And as this deeper mind, this divine mind within you touches every aspect of who you are, healing happens. And as this healing happens, your mind can also present to you a new symbol it can be a color, it can be a sound, it can be an image, it can be anything at all. And whenever you think of this healing symbol, you can apply this symbol to anything that needs the little healing, whether it's healing an infection, healing an injury, or just healing fatigue and tiredness. You can use this symbol to activate the healing response. And as we go deeper and deeper into yourself, I want you to know that you can remember everything that happens at these deeper levels of mind because you are able to maintain full conscious awareness throughout the entire experience. And if you need, you can also ask your deeper mind to give you another symbol to represent this awareness, this conscious awareness that maintains itself even in the deepest levels of mind. Because if you are one to drift off and lose track of time and lose track of the experience, you can use a symbol to counteract that tendency to maintain focus even at the deeper levels of mind. And as we go through all of these experiences today, you will remember every detail that is important. You will remember the symbols that you will need to remember that you may need to use at some future time. And so at this point, think of a way that you could become even more connected to the deeper mind within you. You have your own unique way of connecting with that divine mind, and that way now opens itself to you now. And you are able to make a very strong, very powerful connection to the divine mind. Because in truth, the divine mind is a part of who you are. It is the essence of your soul. It is you on a deeper level. And each of us has our own way of making that connection. And so you make that connection now in a very deep and powerful way, a way that will carry you through every experience of your life, both good and bad, and will help direct the course of your life into better and more useful, more purposeful activities so that you can fulfill your purpose as a human on this planet. And so at this point, we're going to start to return back and come out of the session because you now have a few symbols to work with. You have the symbol of relaxation. You have a symbol of pleasure that can help you relax even further. 
you have a symbol to connect with your deeper, higher self, the divine mind within you. And you also have a symbol to direct that divine energy into a healing influence. And at this point, I'm going to count upwards from one to ten. And when I reach the count of ten, you will be back in your body, back in this physical space, wide awake, feeling vibrantly alive, and ready to move on to the next thing we are here to do. And so we start rising up in consciousness with the count of one. And you may take a deep breath to bring your body out of its slumber and prepare itself for your return. And now we move up to the count of two. And your body further awakens and you remember all the good stuff that you experienced during this short session. And we continue with the count of three and you start to notice the room around you again, bringing yourself up even further. And with the count of four, you may take another deep breath to further waken your body and prepare itself for your return. And with the count of five, the energy is really starting to come in. A feeling of joy and happiness wells up within you as you realize that you've made a very powerful connection with the divine essence within. And so we continue with the number six, coming up further, bringing yourself back to the body, and continuing with seven. Getting ready to stretch. Getting ready to get those muscles moving again. The energy's back out. Up to eight. Almost there. Now we're at nine. Almost there. Eyes starting to open as we reach the count of ten. And you're now wide awake. Back in your body. Back here at the Coptic Center here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> So, anybody want to share any of the symbols that they received in that? <clears throat> My first pleasure was the, a kiss. Okay. And um, the feeling I got, symbol feeling was um, joy. And the sound that went with it was a sigh. Okay. I didn't get the, the other symbols. I, I, the color from that was like, think of bright flash of red, bright light of red, I just light. Okay. But that's as far as I got. I, I didn't quite, I, I was there in the kiss. So. What, what, once you got that, that kind of held on to you, all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Um, It almost felt like it went too fast for me. I got the first color for pleasure was sort of this lime green and pink that really danced around a lot okay. together. I didn't get a sound. And I felt like I was still lingering on the lime green and pink and I wasn't ready yet to move on into something else. So I, I feel like I didn't get anything else. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I can see where I did probably try to take you a little bit faster on this one than what I would normally do. Okay. <coughs> most most of the suggestions in there were were just that suggestions. It's like you might see a color, you might hear a ha sound, you might see an image. Just it it you wouldn't necessarily get everything. But it's just an idea that, okay, allow this to come forward. Allow something to come forward, and it may take this form. It may take this other form. It may take some other form completely. And just kind of the basic idea is that once you go within, and, and I am kind of trying to foreshadow some of the other uh, processes that we'll go through. When you go within and you open yourself up to receiving a symbol, 
it's, it's not something you have to make happen. It's something that when you're in the right space, it will just come up for you. I, okay, I, I just forgot about something. That did, when you talked about the healing, I saw an interesting, like a funnel-shaped cup in this kind of thing that you could set it in so you could, with a handle. Okay. So I saw a cup. I think I remember seeing something in a movie somewhere where, like a scientific beaker kind of thing, but a more of a cone shape. Yeah, it was, a, yeah. It was definitely a funnel-shaped cup. Okay. And it was made out of, like, a metal. That was what came to me for healing. Okay. But I just, that went away for a minute, but now it came back. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? Or? I was really what you, you said about uh, what is your 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 most joyful place on earth. I had completely forgotten how much I love Unity Village and how my first love was there. And the swing set there is on a hill, <laughs> and I've always gone back to that spot when I go there to feel that joy mm-hmm. and brought many people there. So that's now my my symbol. Beautiful, huge, it's like the biggest swing set I've ever seen. You know, it's like a it's high and long chain, and it just sits there. It's, it's, it's a beautiful image, this, the joy of swinging on a really big swing on the top of a hill, overlooking all of Unity Village. <laughs> and I have that now to keep me focused on the joy that I want to call forth. Mm-hmm. Good experience, good, good image, good simple. <laughs> yep. Good. Mine, uh, green, uh, money, and say, and uh, dog bark. <laughs> okay. Money and a zoom of a car. Money, it's like, I don't know. And red. Everything was money. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. That's good. I um. Went too deep, <laughs> but that's not unusual for me. I think maybe that's why I was getting some symbols before when you were talking before we went on break. But one of the things I did get were was um, when you were talking about color. What I saw was something like a <coughs> cup, like the plastic cups that you have out there, and there were were was um, pineapple in a ring. So that golden yellow, and with the pineapple was, were strawberries. So it was like the, a strawberry red, and which is kind of pink in a way to me, and it mixed with the yellow. But they came across as those two fruits mixed together. Okay. And I, I don't have a clue what that means, but <laughs> <laughs> base what base and solar plexus. <laughs> if we're talking chakras. But then I went so deep that I didn't, until you called us back, Okay, I, I didn't really hear anything. Well, I would say that if you responded on the call back, you were hearing everything. Probably it's just you may not call. remember everything. And I did put in a suggestion in there that you'll remember everything that's important to you. Yeah. So maybe there was other stuff there that just wasn't important for you at this time. Okay. That is... I don't know if you can speak to that experience, but that <clears throat> is typically what I do when when I meditate. I'm in a group. I come to Barb's meditations, and very quickly, it's like I'm out. And but I hear her call us back, and I come back. And um, I was told once a long time ago by more than one person, actually, that I go out of body, meditate for my eighth chakra, do all this stuff when I'm meditating. So. I must just be leaving this this level behind. There were a number of people last year that reported the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so this year, earlier this year, I've I've got a number of I've got six different scripts in my in my package here that I could just read through if I if we really wanted to do a long one. Each one of these got recorded as a half hour session. And one of the one for deep relaxation, I very definitely put in 
quite a number of different suggestions in there for maintaining that full conscious awareness throughout the experience. And the recommendation that I'm giving to my customers who are buying this package is that they should listen to each session for a number of times before they move on to the next one. And the first one, the relaxation with full conscious awareness. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit that I could have added into that. And so what you were saying about feeling a little rushed, um, yeah, I was trying to um, condense this half hour into about 10 minutes. So um, I, I do apologize for that. I'll try to... Uh, so you think it's important to be able to stay awake somewhat on the conscious level? Well, it, it is when you want to do a self-directed session. Okay. Uh, when, when you're working with someone who's going to guide you through the experience, it's not as important. Uh, but when you're the one that's going to be guiding you through the experience, you kind of have to maintain some consciousness there to guide the experience. Um, yeah. The only way around that would be to either record a session and then you listen to the recording or to work with somebody who will guide you in the way that you want to be guided. So, yeah, it it's important in, in a lot of cases, but... It's just a matter of practice, really. Practice and, and getting that information into your deeper mind. I think it happens mostly in a guided meditation <coughs> like this because I don't have to be, my own mind doesn't have to be active. Right. I can just, okay, they're doing it. I can go. Right. Yeah. And that, that's the nice thing about having someone else guide it for you. Yeah. 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 With my symbol for pleasure, for example, um, if there is a symbol that my divine conscious mind would be would be more uh, um, familiar with um, in its own language, and will I, I can always adjust that symbol. Oh yeah, I mean I'm not oh, yeah. stuck with that symbol of a kiss. Right, it? right. Uh, symbols. Your, your deeper mind is so capable, so intelligent, that it can use a symbol for one particular situation, and then the next time around you're in a slightly different situation, and it'll give you a different symbol at that point. Um, and so the symbols are not like permanent in a way that, like you said, you're not stuck with one symbol if, if another symbol would work better. Um, a lot of it comes down to the further you relax deeper into yourself, the closer you are to that divine mind, and the more likely you are to get its symbol for whatever it is that you're looking for. I guess I sort of know the answer to this, but it's hard to put it into words of how I will know when I am forcing the sim to a symbol or whether it's my divine mind actually saying this is what... I we're, we're, we're connected on that because I was just about ready to say that one of the things that will really tell you if it's coming from your deeper mind is if you're surprised by it and you're sitting there wondering, okay, I wonder why this symbol came up for that. Because your conscious mind doesn't understand it. And if you get that experience, you know it's coming from your deeper mind. Um, that, that isn't to say that you will always be confused when your deeper mind gives you a symbol because sometimes the symbol your deeper mind gives you is just so obvious mm -hmm. and so in sync with, with what you're looking at that it just makes perfect sense. Like, like the thing about symbol for financial abundance, a handful of money. It's like, well, yeah, that seems to be kind of obvious. $100 bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that seems kind of obvious. It's like, yeah, that's something my conscious mind probably would have come up with. But I've had enough experience to know that when, to know when I'm deep enough to get a proper symbol from my deeper mind. So when I am in that space and I get a symbol that I can recognize and, and identify with, I'm not worried about it in, the, in that way. And that's coming down into the experience and learning that we were talking about before. The more experience you have with this process, the easier it is to identify, yeah, 
that that's coming from my deeper mind. That is coming from that divine mind, and I just go with it. So I, I want to attest to your premise here that I'm now seeing because of how you explain this. That I, I'm I'm astonished many times when I'm, I'll be in my inner reverie saying, "Gee, wouldn't it be nice if blah 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 happened?" And look, it happens. I didn't even I didn't actually ask for it to happen. I'm not asking. I'm just saying let this be and it would be nice if this would happen and it happens so fast and I'm seeing now that that's because I'm in a state of it just happened to be relaxed right. when I thought that you know yeah. yeah so yeah that's the deeper divine mind when you're in that state it uh, you, you manifest right yeah. and and that yeah. that was the last piece of the puzzle well let's make work our way that, that I that I had to okay. that I had to discover yeah. Because one of my experiences way back when, um, I've written about it a couple of times, I'm sure it's in the Choose to Believe somewhere, but I had been walking the streets all night because I didn't have a place to stay. And the next morning, I'm like kind of dead on my feet kind of thing, but it's like I, nowhere to go. So it's like, well, I middle of winter, so I'm pretty cold. It's like, okay, i got to get warmed up. Happen to be close to the mall. I'm going to go into the mall, go into the bookstore because I love books. And I was looking through books, found Joseph Murphy talking about power of the subconscious mind, although I picked up one of his other books. And he's going in, 60-second action plan for getting answers to prayer. And I'm turning to that page, three-step three process, basically. Um, affirm that God is the only power in the universe. There is no power to, to counteract the power of God and just simply accept the thing that you want. And at that time, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what I really need is I need some money, I need a place to stay, that's, that's what I need. And I imagined it, and I felt this feeling of joy and release at that moment. And later that day, the money was there. I had $70 right there. And I'm looking, ar looking around trying to figure out, okay, who left this money on the sidewalk? And it's like, <laughs> nobody's here. Thank you. <laughs> and it happened right like that, and it took me a long time to try to figure out why, because I'm reading through the book, and obviously the next day I go and I buy that book and a couple of others, and I'm reading through, trying to figure out, okay, what did I do? Can I duplicate this? Can I do it again? And not getting very good results for a while. And it was talking about focusing your mind, believing. The faith was the big one, but also focusing your mind, trusting, getting back to belief again. But I had such a hard time trying to duplicate that experience, and I went through this long, drawn-out pathway, learning all the different principles involved, and finally I realized that what made that one experience work so well is because I was in an alternate state of consciousness. I was not fully conscious. I was in an alpha yeah. or theta state on my feet. Yeah. And because mm -hmm. I was that relaxed, it happened. So, mm. that kind of thing can and does happen. Going back to the symbol thing. So, what would you suggest if you get a symbol and you're surprised by it and you don't really understand it? What would you do then? What's the next thing? You get a symbol. What do I do with this symbol? Okay. Yep, that, that's <coughs> where we're going to next. Okay. What, what to do with the symbols, yes. I have to go. Oh, okay. So, yep. I want to. Tell you what. Let Linda have it. Let Linda have it? <laughs> <laughs> How should I let Linda have it? <laughs> <laughs> Take that to mean whatever you want it to mean. It's a symbol. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Thanks for coming in. Nice to see you, Michael. Bro. Nice to see you, too. Okay, so, yes, getting into what do we actually do with the symbols. Okay, that's getting into our next step, which is the imagination step. So that's the actual what do we do part of this mm. process. And, okay, so just going back for review, the imagination, um, 
is primarily to communicate what you want with the deeper mind, with the divine mind. Uh, the more you develop your imagination, the better all aspects of your mind works, not only in that communication, but also in improving memory, which we were talking about earlier. And the more open that channel, the easier information passes both ways. Um, but also, the other thing that's really nice about developing your imagination is that it opens up creative problem solving. Um, and basically, it, the thing that I keep thinking about is like MacGyver, the old TV show. And they tried making a remake of it, and we tried watching a couple episodes, didn't like the new one at all. Uh, but the basic idea is that if you are well connected with your deeper mind, there are fa tons of facts that are stored within you that you can draw upon to solve problems as they come up. Uh, the, the thing that I remember from the old shows, um, they were in a mall, somebody had just been poisoned, and he remembers that there's, a, there's an element in a photographic fixer something that works with developing pictures that will counteract the poison this girl's been given. So he runs over to the photo lab, grab a little cup of their fixer, and solves the, solves the poison problem based off of what he knows about what's in his environment. That's the thing that I remember most out of it. But the basic idea is that if you have ready access to all the information that's been stored within your mind, Whenever a situation comes up, your, your subconscious mind is good at making connections. It's good at seeing relationships between things. And it can tell you that, hey, you've got a problem here, but you've got a solution right over here that will fix it. And a newer example of that, there's a movie called Limitless. And they made a TV show out of that one, too, which I didn't really like the TV show as well as the movie. The movie was made a lot better, but the idea was that they had this drug that could open up a person's entire mind where they can access all of that information just like that. And this, the same idea, it's like, oh, okay, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. Oh, I remember reading that 50 pages back, and that, re that ties in with this now. And, you know, they couldn't continue that series because they couldn't keep coming up with that with brilliant stuff. I mean, they did about a year and a half, and they they wore out. They couldn't keep it up. <laughs> well, and I think I think another thing is it too. Like people like me, I was a big fan of the movie, and they just took the TV show in in too many goofy directions. It's like I I understand what they're trying to do with that. It's not coming across as well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. There's there's just so much you can do with the idea. You know, we don't actually have the drug, so we can't actually write that stuff. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, or what I'm finding here is the writers, if they actually went through this process, uh -huh. relaxed down into that deeper mind to come up with those ideas. I'm finding that with my email list because I, I run out of ideas. It's like, okay, I need to write an email. I need to touch base with my subscriber base. I need to come up with something that they're going to enjoy reading. And if I do it for my conscious mind, sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't, and most of the time it's only so-so. But when I do go within, and I t make that contact, and I say, okay, I need a good email, and I've got a symbol for that, as far as an email that's going to get a big response, it's basically a crowd cheering. It's like, th throw out the email like I'm throwing a softball and the crowd cheers. So that, that's my symbol for writing a good email. Uh, so I go within, I envision the symbol, going back to the question on how do we actually use the symbols. I envision the symbol, this is what I want to accomplish. Okay, give me the email, what's, what's the, What's the subject line? What's the title of this email? And then I get the, get the subject line. Okay, write that down. Go back with it. Okay. Now, give me the email. <laughs> How do I write this? What's, what's the story that I put into it? How do I approach that? How do I lead into what I need to lead, lead into with that? And when I do that, I get a much better response. I get more of a crowd sharing. So if I can wave my flag here. 
I fixed our pool pump last year, <laughs> and I don't have a clue about mechanics. Right. I, it went out. We had a thunderstorm. And I just stared at it, and this was brand new and expensive, and I thought, not only can we not afford to get it fixed right now, but we can't afford to replace it. And so I just thought, okay, what do I do? It, when all was said and done, it was one little piece that we could remove, and it was actually the extension cord hooking it up that had gotten fried and not the pump. Huh. There were, yeah, there were two pieces of that. There was the, the little breaker that was attached to the, the yeah. pump that needed to get loose, and then the extension cord was the second piece. So yeah, once we replaced both of those. But I did, I thought of that. Yeah, yeah, you came that up with the nice. answer. Yeah, you came up with the answer on that. <laughs> I did it. Nice. Mm -hmm. God told me what to do. Good job. I'm sorry, I have to. Sure. You did but, it. But that, but that, that's, an yeah. that's an exa perfect example of what we're talking about here is that the information's in there. And even if you don't have it within your own conscious mind, even if you don't have it within your own memory bank, the divine mind knows everything. So even if you don't have the information yourself, as long as you make connection with the divine mind, you have access to everything. So, yeah, that's that's basic idea. So as far as developing the imagination, um, let me just ask the question, since it is a small group here, how many people feel like they really need to develop their imagination? Or do you feel like, okay, I would. I, was, I always love to develop okay. my imagination. Okay. I had to work on mine, so I know how to develop it. Uh, there, I really, really admire artists who have wonderful imaginations, and you give them an idea, and it's like, yeah, I can run with that. And they come up with so many wonderful things. I've had to work at it. So what, what I've got here... Can can pretty much work for anybody. I, Alan, uh, I I develop my imagination to be able so that I can imagine something and be able to with my eyes closed watch watch it on the on a screen in my mind like watching a TV, and then I have to, I don't do it very much anymore because it's kind of weird, you know, it's spooky a little bit, you know, like it's, but. Uh, I, I've thought about developing that as far as like being able to actually visualize me in a situation doing something. There's, yeah, I mean, it, it may be different than what most people experience, but there's definitely nothing wrong with it. I mean, one, one of the recordings that I created, um, I think it was last year, was basically a mini vacation. And it was a process kind of like what we just went through where I guide people into themselves and then just kind of suggest, okay, you're, you're going to be going on this wonderful va vacation, getting ready, getting all the bags packed, flying out, and, you're, and suddenly you're there and you're in this beautiful location, absolutely gorgeous, perfect, perfect place for you to just indulge yourself. And I just kind of go, go through the whole thing. And when you are that far down in, into yourself and you can't imagine those things in vivid reality, intense vivid reality, um, you come away with it as though you really did experience it. And the memory of that experience is the same as a memory of a real experience. And that gets into, again, the practical aspect of what we're doing here is because a lot of our beliefs, a lot of our tendencies are based off of what we remember from the past. And so when we remember being teased as a kid, or if we remember being rejected by someone, that causes us to hold back, to not put ourselves forward because of those memories. But if we can change those memories, or at least overpower them with new memories, Memories of being accepted, memories of being the, 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 the hero of the class, like the, the quarterback or the prom king or whatever. I mean, whatever. Uh, just having memories that overshadow all those negative memories, memories that are positive that say, yes, you are worth something. You are accepted by the people around you. You are valuable. You have good ideas. 
those memories will cause us to step forward more often than when we're working off the limited memories. So that's one of the big things of what we're doing here. And the whole reason for the imagination and being able to visualize things is twofold. One, to be able to create those memories. And that's the level of imagination that you're talking about, to be able to see and experience something as though it's actually happening. But the other level of imagination is being able to conceive of possibilities that you've never experienced before. And that gets into uh, some of the early parts of this. Um, okay. Actually, that gets into part C. Before that point, getting to the point of being able to see things in your mind as clearly as you see them with your physical eyes, or to be able to hear sounds, or to be able to feel and touch things within your mind and, and make that a real experience, it, it really does come down to practice. And there's really no other way around it, but there's a way of making it more direct and concrete. Uh, one of the examples that I that I use, and I'm gonna, and well, I'll give you the purple one, um, and because because you said you needed more help, I'm, I'm picking on you right now. But the basic idea is that you take something in your hands, and it can be anything. It can be a pen. It can be a piece of jewelry. It can be any, anything you want to grab. I mean, if you want to come up, if anybody wants to come up and grab a piece off of here, that's good. But the idea is to, to focus on it, to study it with your physical eyes, and to try to memorize it. Like this has a little hole on this, on this part right here. And there's a couple little, a little, little imperfections around uh, what's probably a line around there that it might separate, but not easily, so I'm not going to force it. <laughs> but you focus on the details, and you look at it, and you try to memorize it, and then when you think you've got it, just close your eyes and remember what you just saw. And you try to look for the hole on the end or the little pieces around that line and the way it sparkles around the whole thing. And you try to imagine all the little details you just saw with your physical eyes. And then you open your eyes again, and you check. What did I forget? What did I remember? What are the details that are actually there? And then you close your eyes again, and you try to remember all those little details, and you pick up the little things that you missed the first time around. And you go back and forth, back and forth. <coughs> and eventually you get to the point where you can see it in your mind just as clearly as you did with your physical eyes. And that's just the sense of sight. There's also the sense of touch. There's a texture to this, and I'm not going to rub it too much because some of the glitter is coming off. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there's a texture there. And so I feel it with my physical fingers, and then I pull my fingers away, and then I try to feel it within my mind. And I reproduce that experience on a mental level. And then you just go back and forth between the physical experience and the mental experience. And that develops the ability to visualize or the ability to imagine those physical details on a physical space, on a, on a mental space. So that's, that's one of the aspects. Uh, another one of the benefits of having the little goodies in there is because the sense of taste is another one of those things that you can take one bite of something that tastes good, chew that one down, swallow it, and then imagine that you're taking the next bite. And make that experience just as fulfilling as the physical taste. And then not only will that slow down your eating so that you actually eat less in a meal, can be kind of good for losing a little weight, but it can also be a good thing when we're going into this relaxation, when we're going into this process. If there's something that you really, really enjoy, the more you make it real, the more it takes you down deep into those deeper levels. So that, that's the physical, that's the mechanical aspect of the imagination. Uh, the other aspect that is probably even more important is just being able to see life in a new way. 
And some of the suggestions that I put down into the handout is just imagining life from an alternate's perspective. And the examples that I've written down is ant, eagle, superhero, and, and the divine. And if you just imagine life from the perspective of an ant, first, first of all, everything is really, really huge. But then the other aspect of that is the society, ant society. They're very militant. They're very direct. They're very practical. They're very, either you have a job and you're doing your job or you're out. <laughs> And, and that's, that's just the way they are. They don't, they don't make emotional attachments. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the wrong spot, it's like, well, that's the way life is. So, <laughs> yeah. But just imagining life from these different perspectives. An eagle obviously has a completely different experience of life. Flying above, watching for its food, and being able to see very tiny details and being able to respond to those details. Um, complete, completely different experience. Um, being able to imagine life as a superhero, whatever your favorite superhero was, Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, whatever. Um, what kind of life did they have to leave? Lead. And a lot of them, they had their secret identity kind of thing. It's like you had to maintain a separation between that life and your other life. And just being able to imagine what different people have to go through and how they live their lives. I mean, um, there's a lot of people now that are making fun of our new president. And it's like, well, he must be a really... Um, whatever. We're, we're not going to go there. But what if we took a moment and imagined life from his perspective? I mean, it might be completely alien. Who knows? It may be. <laughs> it may be alien. Um, but being able to see life from another person's perspective opens up some of our ability to imagine things differently than they are for us in our current life. It helps to open up our creativity. Just as one one example there. But imagine it from his perspective, you wouldn't have any creativity or compassion or care. So there. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But to be able to but then that also as far as no compassion, no no creativity, that goes back to imagining life as an ant. I mean kind of the same thing, right? You got a job to do, you do your job, you do it the best way you can. Uh, maybe you make it, maybe you don't. So, but again, all of this is just opening the doors, getting rid of the box so that you're no longer hammered in by what has always been. Um, one, of the, one of the exercises that I really enjoy doing, and this opens up creativity like, like nothing else, and that is to imagine two completely random objects. And let's see here. We've got this and we've got this. Okay. A crystal and a candle. Imagine these being one object. A candle with the characteristics of a crystal or a crystal that can burn like a candle. Just as, just as one example. Um, or... Another example would be a chair and a ballpoint pen. How would those two combine? Maybe, maybe you get a um, skating rink with paper and you just kind of draw by moving the chair around. That's a ballpoint pen on the, on the bottom of each four legs. And <laughs> right. You just take the chair and move it around and draw four pictures at the same time. Yep. That might be, that might be similar to an invention that was made a long time ago. I don't even remember what they called it, but basically there were two pens, ball, like, not like not ballpoint pens, but similar. I no, well, that's similar, similar, but basically someone is writing a document with this hand and the machine is writing a copy with the other pen. So you get two perfect copies of, of an original document. 
So just combining different things in different ways. Um, how? Um, okay, let's see here. An angel and um, a calculator. Completely random. How would those two things combine? Uh, an angel with metal wings and a uh, little circuit board inside. I guess a cyborg? Maybe. Maybe. Cyborg. Could be. Could be. I remember um, a Doctor Who episode, the, mm -hmm. the, the hosts, whatever, on the Titanic. <laughs> metal, metal angels, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, actually, that reminds me of a uh, phrase you... You use something about the technology gods? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this kind of line of thinking can open up your creativity. And basically, all, I'm, all I was going to be doing with that today is just giving you the suggestion. Uh, the other way of doing it is exploring what we would normally consider to be wrong choices. Um, as, as a quick example, um, my previous history has always been that meat is cooked in a particular way. You either throw it in the oven and bake it or you fry it. And I've heard people talk about boiling meat, but I've never actually done it because something just doesn't seem right about that. But maybe I should try it some point just to see what happens. Um, or the other thing is for those of us who have usually been um, more willing to step back and let other people direct an event and, and take the lead, sometimes it could be a way of, okay, let me explore not only taking the lead, but actually doing something in a way that I don't think anybody's really going to like and see what happens. Um, although before I get to that point, I would probably do something a little bit different. It's like, okay, cl cleaning the house. Okay, let's just throw out a random example, and I am not thinking ahead on this at all. This is spontaneous, coming right out, cleaning the house. Okay, what could we do that would be considered wrong on that? Um, sandblasting would definitely be a wrong choice with that for a lot of things, but if we imagine that choice, and we imagine what would actually happen. Well, maybe there's some, some cases where that might work. I mean, if um, our garage needs to be repainted, that might be a good way of getting rid of the old paint. When, um, when I would, uh, I worked for a painter guy that after we sanded down all the drywall the, uh, and the, the rooms were filled with dust, he would uh, hook up a, one of those big huge blower fans and then a couple of small window fans at the doorways and stir up all the dust and blow it out the doors like that. And and use a leaf blower too. He'd use a leaf blower so he'd like sandblasting. Okay. Yeah, okay. Did it work? One way, yeah, that's one way to clean out the dust out of the corner, <laughs> right? You know, just <laughs> You know, I th I think in a way that might have been the type of thinking that went into uh, things like chocolate covered ants. Yeah. It's like, put insects in your chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the peanut butter? Yeah. Got to have some peanut butter out of them, too. Uh, I, I remember seeing a TV show where they had scorpions in something. It's like, whatever. But some people like that. So even what we consider to be wrong choices can be right in, the cert in, in certain circumstances. But the whole idea of that here, again, the whole idea is to loosen things up inside your mind so that when you go within and when you ask your deeper mind for guidance, you don't automatically reject it because, no, that can't possibly happen that way. The idea is to loosen yourself up so that when the deeper mind gives you an idea, you're more willing to just go along with it. And again, the final, the final suggestion here is getting a little bit closer into reality, and that is just to imagine things that you would normally consider to be impossible. Uh, like, that's not going to happen. I can get paid just to do whatever I want to do. I can play and get paid for it. And as an example of that, I remember reading, uh, what was it, last year, the year before, uh, a guy who, no, actually I heard it on an on a audio program. guy was told that you can make money doing anything. You can make money 
played. And what he really enjoyed doing was playing Frisbee. <coughs> and he said, okay, I'm open to the idea. Somehow I can get paid playing Frisbee. And so he thought about it, and he thought about it, and thought about it. And of course, when you're thinking about a conscious mind, the idea doesn't really come. When you're open to the subconscious mind, an idea comes. So one day he was taking a shower, and most of us know that's an experience where we're a little bit more relaxed consciously, and the subconscious mind is more likely to give us ideas. Well, he had this idea to contact the manufacturer of the Frisbee toy and pitch them on this idea of having him be a goodwill ambassador to other countries. And so they paid him to go around the world to play Frisbee with different people in different countries. Nice. So nice. he found a way to get paid to play. Nice. Um, the, other, the other idea that I had is, uh, or the idea to talk about is what's impossible, making a million dollars a day. Well, let's see, that comes out to $365 million a year. Uh, are there anybody, is there any person in the world that makes that much money? Yeah. Probably. So it's possible. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea on that, is that it's possible. If one person can do it, somebody else can do it. Um, sports heroes get, what, $10, 20000000 million a year, something like that. What does that boil down to on a, on a, on a, on a daily basis? Let's see. Three, okay, three, three million, three, three point six five million comes out to be ten thousand dollars a day. Can we imagine make, making ten thousand dollars a day? Yeah. Twenty thousand, thirty thousand? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. But I can tell you from my own experience that when I first considered the idea, can I actually make a thousand dollars a day? My my belief system at that time said, that's impossible. Can't do it. Someone else, maybe not me. But the, the idea here is that we've got to get our own minds open to the possibility. Yes, it is possible. Um, at this point, yeah, I, I can definitely see 10,000 a day, maybe even 100,000 a day. I'm still working on getting a belief that goes above that, but we're getting there. I toot my own horn. Sure. I built an art car that was like a boat on wheels, and I got, I made forty grand a year just driving it around America, passing out pictures of it with my autograph. Wow! Wow! That's good. I drank it all up. But, you know, <laughs> still did it. It's it's still something. What yeah. is it that you made? An art car that looked like a boat on wheels. How cool! There's a music video, Magic Boat music video. Okay. Good. I'm YouTube. Yeah. You're an inspiration. I'm building another one. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, the, the next example that I had written down is perfect childhood. What if, what if you could imagine your entire childhood being exactly as you wanted it to be? And that was, that was one of the experiences that I worked with with this. Um, shortly after the very first uh, Symbolic Solutions workshop last January, uh, we were here on a Sunday night, and the speaker had, had um, information that was similar as far as going back in time and imagining memories as, as different than what they originally were. And something in the way he said it sparked an idea that I can combine the two ideas together and I did. I, I went back and I said, okay, let's just imagine that everything in my childhood was absolutely perfect. People loved me. We had lots of money. I was able to do whatever I wanted to do, and it all worked out. And so I went through the process. I went through that, and then I came out of it. And it's like, you know what? I understand money a whole lot better now than I ever did before. Mm -hmm. It's a game. It's a game. And it's something that we all play, and it's kind of like, um, in a way, it's like, I don't know if you guys ever played store as a kid. It's like you just grab a bunch of stuff out of the out of the cupboards and you set it up on a counter, and then the other the other kids come up and they'll either pay what you ask for or you, you don't. It's like okay, this can of beans, it's a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars for a can of beans. Well, that's what the adults think, but the kids say, okay, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay you that. I'll play with you. And it's like okay, but I ha I have this I have this. Other thing, this shirt, it's $1,000. It's like, okay, well, you paid $100 for my beans. I'll pay you $1,000 for the shirt. Whatever. It's all a game. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, just all that, all that going into imagining, walking through walls, all, all that kind of stuff. The idea in all of this is that we limit ourselves in so many different ways by being unable to imagine life any different than it is now. And the first step to being able to change it is to be able to imagine it as being something different. Okay, so, oh wow, it's already almost four. Tell you what, I think I'm ready for another break before we get into something else. Let's go ahead and just take another 15 minute break.